Well, joining me now to discuss China's growing taste for coffee is Sean Hackett. He's president of Hackett Financial Advisors. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, we see that Starbucks already has ambitious plans for China. How much more can Starbucks really grow and hope to grow in China? Well, when we look at the coffee market in Asia, we have two countries that we have a great template for. One is Japan and the other one is South Korea. Both of them went from being tea drinking countries to being brewed coffee drinking companies. And it went through what's called an S-curve, where you grow very slowly in the beginning, and then you reach this vertical move higher in demand and the countries that embrace coffee as a culture. I believe that um, Starbucks is believing that we are at that point, and the reason they're making these big investments now is that they expect to hit this vertical move in the S curve and ride the wave for the next 5, 10, even 15 years for this maturation of the Chinese market from a tea drinking culture to a more of a coffee drinking culture. And I think they're probably right about that um, as long as they manage the growth and don't grow too fast. So what's Starbucks' business strategy in China versus how it's approached other markets? Well, I think, I think it's uh, a little bit different. Everything in China is big. You know, it's, it's bigger than everything. Everything is bigger there. There's more people, more everything. So, for example, you know, they open up this brand new large, it's almost like a restaurant-style coffee um, shop just recently. And I think that is the strategy they're going to be going with in the beginning is to go after these more metropolitan markets, these bigger markets, and go after a larger product offering that can capture this large population that is moving from, uh, you know, moving up on the value chain of their income. That's something that's a little different. We haven't really seen that in the United States, is remain more of boutique, smaller Starbuckses, not these big, almost restaurateurs kind of, of situations. So I think that that is a big change and something that they're betting on heavily, that that will be a successful business model, at least in the beginning, in China. So how much competition is posed by other coffee chains, not just major ones, but some of these independent coffee shops and boutique-themed cafes? Well, when you have over 50% of the market, as they do right now, and when you're at still a very early stage of the coffee growth in China, meaning we're still at just at the beginning of this S-curve, they really shouldn't have a problem fending off competition. I mean, they really should own this category. For the, the, the time that you worry about competition is when you're reaching the upper end of the S-curve, when you start to reach slower growth, more maturation, where the, the, the amount of per capita consumption starts to fall. We are far, far away from that. And given their dominant position and brand recognition in the country, I really don't think that they're going to have a problem fending off uh, some of the short-term competition that may come in. They really, it's really going to be an execution issue right now, not a competition issue. Now, what about the Chinese consumers themselves? What are they looking for in their coffee experience? Well, right now, just like when any Asian country starts to drink coffee, what they're looking for right now is a flavorful experience. They're not really, at the moment, ready for the high-end coffee uh, experience that we have here in the United States. What they're looking for is a good quality, flavorful coffee uh, with sweetness, with cream. In fact, just recently they've, we've seen that there's uh, cheese coffee has been a big hit over there that's been introduced where they're putting you know, kind of cream cheese on the coffee and, and it's been a big, big hit. So, so I think they're looking for innovative ways to use lower quality coffee in a flavorful fashion that can satisfy their taste until their socioeconomic uh, growth allows them to afford higher quality coffee and until the, their taste buds move to the higher end of the market right now. All right, well, thank you so much. Sean Hackett there, president of Hackett Financial Advisors.